the you bought I got, a new camera? I got a badass new camera. And uh, I'm filming all the things for, for the gym right now. But you know, bro, you can have the best uh, videos. But if your audio sucks, nobody stopped to watch you. Know? Yeah. So, yeah, no. so I'm, I'm, I work on get some mics and editing all the, the audio. So I'm pretty on top of the You're on it. The audio thing now. Ready? Ready? Bro, I didn't know till what, last camp that you used to be an audio guy. That that was your shit. Here I am, man. And here you are, dude. So you, you know what, bro? Because like when I was 22 and 23, <clears throat> that's when I met my, my ex-wife. And she was all into the, the TV thing, right? So I ended up doing a lot of courses of uh, <coughs> producing, you know, like audio, video, lighting, and other things. End up that, that I did a lot of work with those, you know. And at the end of the day, bro, I would love to work with audio, video, and lighting. I just don't like to be in front of the camera, yeah. you know. I like to be behind, <coughs> set it, everything up, editing, you know, grading, uh, fixing. That's you why want, I'm so into the... You want to start producing the podcast? Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give, me, give, me, give me a job. <laughs> uh, so we're doing our last class we missed, our Guns and Geese recap. Yep. Because of flight times and bullshit. Yeah, the day after but, was kind of hectic, and we were fucking smashed. But, uh, man, some people were upset about that. Like, dude, you guys never did your, your Guns and Geese episode. Here we are. So here we are. We're going to do one for class class five that just wrapped up yesterday. And like we always say, that was the best class. We're just fucking rad. Yeah, if you need to adjust as we're talking, adjust. No, I think that's, I think that's um, so good. But bro, like me and Mike just did an episode and we were talking about that. Like every class has been rad, but every class has been different too. Absolutely. Different personalities. And, uh, but not just different personalities on an individual level, but like almost different themes. You know what I'm saying? And you said like last class was almost like half women. Like girl power theme. Girl power theme. Yeah. Then this class we had four women. But it didn't affect it at all. It's just a different vibe. Yeah, it didn't affect it negatively in this class. I think the theme was regaining manhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whereas last class was like women empowerment, like a third of the class was women. And uh, that was really drove the theme of the theme of the class. And this class, you know, we heard around the bonfire and a lot of guys, they all thought they were alone. Everyone would get a little brave and speak up. And then the next guy, man, the next guy, the next guy. And they all yeah. felt kind of like, man, we're not, I don't feel like, a, we don't feel like men anymore. We're just males going about this earth and, you know, in, in uh, insecurities and being able to pre protect their families, et cetera, et cetera. Because, like, you said the next class theme looks like it's going to be couples theme, huh? Bro, the next class theme, uh, I think we're up to 13 or 14 now. And most of them are couples, signed right? Signed up. So almost half. It's almost half full. And out of that, eight of them are couples. Okay. I was hoping you were going to say 13 of them are couples. Nine of them. Which would make, Nine of them which would make one of them a throuple. A throuple. <laughs> Nine of them are couples. Nice. Um, yeah, he was, he was saying he's already coming back to next class. Yeah. And he wants to bring his wife. And he said if anyone can convince his wife to, comes and get, to come to Guns and Geese, he'll write him a check for $1,000. <laughs> and I said, hey, connect me with your wife. And I'll tell her how to make the quickest 500 bucks she's ever made in her life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's cool. We've had, uh, I mean, there's a handful of guys. Brennan was another one that's like, my wife's coming through this. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, that's not something that's uncommon to hear because like, obviously you want your wife to be able to shoot a gun yeah. and have some fucking confidence, especially if like you're like Mike, for instance, an airline pilot, he's gone a lot half the time. And so you better hope your woman knows how to fucking yeah. hold the fort down. And Brendan said his wife's a savage. Yeah. Brendan said she's like six foot tall, played rugby, like I think he said in like college. Did they meet through rugby? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. But he said she's a fucking savage. And uh, he's like, she is going to do, She's he's like, not the shirtless picture, but the ab picture <laughs> with us in the next class. All right. Well, so hey, 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 hey. Yeah. 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 We got a long time till November. 
So it's time to start <laughs> getting ready now. Bro, I'm, all I'm going to say is the last several, you know, shirtless pictures. I mean, someone bring more abs than me. Come on. Well, it, it feels on. like it's going to become like Guns and Geese, Mr. Olympia kind of thing. <laughs> Guns and Geese slash uh, <laughs> uh, Chippendales tryouts. Um, you know, I don't know if I told you this, but Nanette, when I hung out with her the other day, yeah. she told me, she said the bonfire wasn't. Was a letdown. You wasn't, about yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't quite what I was looking for. I agree with that on the last class. And it's like, oh, fuck, dude. I was disappointed with the bonfire in the last class. Like, I hate that. Only because there was a lot of pauses and dead silence. And there were, we, we talked about it. There's a lot of hesitation of we, opening up. Right. And we improved it this class around. And that's the biggest thing for us, you know, is obviously even doing the podcast. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, beer. <laughs> there we go. Um. <laughs> There sorry. we go. Yeah, boa. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> doing the podcast, but you know, reading the after action reviews from all the students, doing our own after action review at, at each day. You know, every day we drive out of the range. What do I say? Hey guys, sustainments improvements. Yeah. You know, after after we leave the jujitsu session, you know, and we we do that every day. It makes the product better, and we had determined that we need to help steer. And actually have topics and questions for the bonfire night. And this time around, uh, awesome probably isn't the right word. Powerful. Powerful. You know, yeah. the, the bonfire, this, this that was, camp that was, was powerful. Meaningful. Man. Super meaningful. meaningful. For everybody. For bro. everybody. But, bro, like the topic. So, we were talking in the car, I think, a day or two before. And we we're like, what are some talking points that are going to get people to come out of their shell? And it was... As simple, we never went past the initial talking point. Right. What helped you or what caused you to go to jiu-jitsu? And like some people, their stories, nothing crazy, but it's still cool to hear what brought them to the mats. Mm -hmm. And then, man, it just got deeper and deeper yeah. and deeper. And people are talking about a lifetime of abuse. Childhood. And losing and ne like never having a father. And like before you know it. Man, everybody. And, and, and the other thing about this is like this last class, which was, uh, I mean, we just wrapped up. It's what, May 2nd today? May 1st. Yeah, May 1st. Um, May 2nd. No, May 2nd. Oh, today is May 2nd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These, the, the 30 people that were here, and it took a couple people coming out of their shell, right? And I think that gave a pass. What? And then a bunch of people were like, fuck man there's something i want to get off my sh my yeah, chest yeah. and then people were talking about how like their path to jujitsu was because they realized that they're fat and they're out of shape they're not capable of protecting their family they don't feel like a man anymore and bro it became fucking cathartic for everybody Absolutely. and that's kind of what we hope for it and some of them have been and uh actually i think they all have been class class four you just dropped the ball a little bit <laughs> But no, it's it was cool, man, and uh, I think I think that's an important part of the camp because that portion of bonding with your teammates, you get to know them on a little different level than you do on the mats or on the range, you know. Well, what what other, you know, what other uh, shooting, fighting class profile that do you guys know of where the students get to hang out with the cadre each night? and have dinners together and, and have these discussions and get to know each other, uh, their classmates for one, and their, the cadre in a more intimate level, you know, of, you know, in a more personalized level. And even like regular classes that I've gone to, never does the whole class go hang out after class. No. Little clicks form. That's just the way it is. And three or four people go here and five or six people go there. And then that reinforces the click. So the next day of training – it just reinforces the click throughout the weekend. Whereas this is like, you're forced. Night one, I mean, in brief, everybody's in a circle. Sit down. Tell us your name, why you came, what your previous experience is. You know, we start the camp off, the weekend off, with like a share session. Yeah. And we've said, that's what, this camp has nothing to do with shooting or jujitsu. Yeah. This camp is about personal growth, about discipline, about living the guns. Like, like Joao said yesterday, man. We live, our life is a mini guns and geese. You know, like our life is on the mat, on the range, training, working out, eating healthy, being disciplined, you know, 
keeping our, our shit in our house in order. And uh, that's really what the camp is about. And I think we accomplished that. And, dude, I've heard from, I mean, Nanette, Nanette told me, Emily told me, Christy told me. So I'm hearing it from females, but I'm assuming that there's plenty of men that feel the same way. Maybe they just don't articulate it. But that initial introduction where you sit down, you see everyone's faces, you hear who they are, just a, just a little microcosm of their life. And before you know it, like there's a level of comfort being developed. And uh, all the girls said like that little introduction gave me comfort and made me feel safe because now I know who I'm sharing the next however many days with. Yeah. And uh, that in itself, I think, is important because if you show up and you have any apprehensions or you're nervous and the first thing we do is like, OK, let's talk about a, the firearm safety brief. That's intimidating for a lot of people. Yes. So like they can come here, they can put their guard down and just see what everybody's all about. And then it's kind of like, like Christy said, she's like, oh, I realize I'm actually, cause she had some fear coming down here of who she's going to be sharing these experiences with. Yeah. And then she goes, I'm sharing these experiences with the 30 safest people that I could. Yeah. Exactly. Because sometimes maybe fighting and shooting sounds like savage, a thing for savage men, right? And then you, you come with that little, you know, fear of who you're going to find here. And when they sit on a, on that circle and start introducing themselves, it's kind of normal people basically looking for the same thing. Yeah, right? we're the same. So, so they feel like, okay, I'm part of this. I'm not like uh, the little scary girl among savages, right? No, it's everybody nice and cool, normal people looking for improvement, right? So, uh, that give her that give them comfort it give us too because before that that we don't know what to to think right it's just yeah. like all right 30 new people let's see what happened and like i always bro like at the end of the the camp you 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 able to to look at each other like dude this is a nice class nice people you know it's awesome and you know we talked about this a little bit after the last class but i think this goes probably for all of us you know in our world i forget that a lot of people are super apprehensive and or nervous morning one day one on the range from inexperienced people to even experienced people because the experienced guys the cops eyes are on you eyes are on them and yeah. they want to look good they don't want to embarrass themselves or their department so they're like fuck i need to look good in front of this dude and then the new people are like wait you want me to do what you know yeah Where we're like ah, you're just gonna do this and this and this and it's the same thing with the jujitsu all right, guys, when you go to do the balloon sweep, like, we lift people with our legs over our heads all the time. We invert all the time. But you get someone out there who's 40-something years old who hasn't done a somersault, you know, in 37 years since they were three years old, a little baby. And it's like, wait, you want me to lift a 200-pound man, roll him over my head, and then I got to roll over? So... I think sometimes, you know, and I think we, we balance it well and the curriculum works. There's a reason it starts yeah. slow and builds because at the end of the end of the third day, everyone was shooting from trapped retention. Everyone was, you know, drawn and doing reloads with strong hand, support hand only stuff. And then on the mats, everybody did a balloon sweep, <laughs> you know, and doing Bro arm bars left yeah, and right yeah, yeah, for you know? a whole three years, uh, three days. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something. I yeah. think it's, uh, and I don't think we've done this necessarily every class or even any class, but the balloon sweep, we should make a point of having that be what we wrap it up with. Yeah, the culmination. Seriously, yeah. because you could see in people's eyes. I mean, we were joking about it yesterday. You're literally just doing a somersault with a person. Easy or hard, that movement in itself shouldn't elicit a room full of people clapping and cheering but no, it did it, it, that's the best part but because like for some of them easy right for some of them looks impossible but once they were able to do it do it everybody was rooting and cheering up and like ah, fuck. that was like that was awesome bro you know like when when what's his name he did the balloon me Jamie. 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 And he, everybody goes like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, bro, that was special. It was, <laughs> For bro. us. And imagine how special it was for him. And know? dude, like, look, uh, on the outside looking in, if you don't share that vibe, if you're not on the mats, it's like, 
you got 30 people cheering because you guys did a somersault together. It almost feels silly to say, but this is a guy who's knows that he needs to better himself, who knows it's time to get on the path. And he talked about it openly. And so to see him do something that just like you said, if you would have asked him if he could 20 minutes earlier, he would have said no. Yep. And he would have believed no. And then he did. And everybody like saw that in him. And it's like, man, you see someone growth, like having growth in real time. That's fucking inspiring, dude. And so like, I don't know what it is, but the balloon has to be part of how we wrap it, it is, up. Dude. It is culmination. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, you know, I got a call uh, when we we're coming back from the range. I got a call from one of the students. He just said, hey, man, you know, I obviously I did my course critique review, but I wanted to tell you, like, uh, I tried to tell, I wanted to tell, talk to you in person, but it was so crazy busy. And uh, he's like, I, so I figured I'd call you. And he was like, you know, the safety was impeccable. He's like, I was nervous day one. Like, how is this all going to work out? And he's like, the second you went into your safety, the second you went into your safety brief, the second I watched your demo, the second you had us just all dry firing. And I was like, oh, they've got this figured out. Like, there's a formula here. Yeah. They've got it figured out behind the scenes. They've, they've worked this out to a T. And he's like, then we got on the mat. It's not just random. And no, it's not just random. Totally not. And, you know, he's, so he's been training at a gym locally. He's probably about I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour away from me. And uh, I think he's got three stripes on his white belt. He's been training probably, you know, about a year. And uh, he's like, dude, on the mat, he's like, I learned more in like the six to nine hours that we did this weekend than I have in months. Just because yeah. the curriculum and the way it was laid out and the way it was sequenced and no one got hurt. No one got injured. You know, it was like, Nobody like, landing on top of each other this yeah. time. That and was the great. dude's he's a smart dude. And he's like, a lot of people don't just recognize that, oh, this is just the course. This is what they're teaching. He's like, I make my life in, in accident prevention in athletes and stuff. And he's like, I know when I watch you guys do this, I know, oh, they, these guys fucking got this dialed in. Like, there's a formula. There's a reason everything is done the way it is. They've got a doubt. And obviously we've talked about this is a finely, finely attuned, well-oiled machine that we're constantly trying to hone and sharpen just like everything we do in our lives, our jujitsu, our shooting, our fitness, you know? And for the people that don't have like a, a, that don't see that for what it is on a conscious level, they still feel it. For sure. And we don't want them to see it, honestly. Like we want them to come here and and enjoy the camp and be open to learn and open-minded. I don't care whether they see what's going on behind the scenes. I re- we don't really want them to. We just want their experience to be perfectly smooth, you know? Yeah. No, this, yeah. Oh, the no, no, this happened the first podcast. Get it and just let it rain. And I just say, you know what? Yeah. We do real life, too. We do. And we're in Lappin's Jiu-Jitsu Academy, and sometimes people call. Actually, we hope we get more phone calls, right? That's a good thing. It's going to go to the voicemail. And Mama's going to call him back. All right, Roger. Probably that. spam anyway. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Um, but yeah, no, super cool camp. Um, good weather all the way up until the last morning of shooting. Which was a good experience, too. It was a good I experience. haven't had that. Yeah. Uh, opened my eyes for, for the gear I have to carry. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. yeah. A little, put jacket. a little raincoat in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, all the cadre. Pulled out their little Patagonia raincoats or whatever, you know. Not me, <laughs> fuck <laughs> you. Not me either. I'm like, shit. Yeah, because we didn't. We didn't have. I don't yeah. have one. Uh, but no, I think that was cool because Louise. I mean, this the southern weather. When I lived at Fort Benning, I used to experience this shit, and it can go from. I mean, it got dark, dude. Uh, nighttime. Remember, I joked and said, "Hey, we're going to night vision training now, guys." It looked at like nighttime. Absolute pouring rain, like as hard as rain can get. And the southern rain is way fucking more aggressive than, like, Seattle rains all the time, but it doesn't rain like that. Yeah, yeah. And it lasted for 15 minutes, and then fucking blue skies. and it was, 45 minutes. Dude, I'm being, I'm being <laughs> optimistic, dude. But, like, as soon as it started to break, yeah. I was like, man, I wonder, like, the rain stopped so we can start training? Cool. Yeah. But then the fucking, and it was way at the end of the range, like, where we do the walk back. You see a little blue sky peek yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, boom. Beautiful. Not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful weather. Yeah. It's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah, and that was cool. You know, we we were able to basically get through everything. People got a little bit of wet, some muddy shoes, but uh, no real issues. And, you know, going back kind of the shooting, just recapping for, for those of you that are going to attend November 
or attend Guns and Geese next year. Um, you know, same thing. What do we see gear issue-wise on the range? The only guns that had issues that did not work were the non-Glocks. Yep. Yep. You know, and and like I mean, it's I like that you always say too. This isn't me being a Glock fanboy. I am not a Glock fanboy. I don't right fucking. All. It's this is just data. This is just data. And every that's, fucking class, yep. the non Glocks have issues. Yep. And, and not and not every non Glock has an issue. That's no, not what we're saying. Sure. But what we're saying is the guns that do have issues right. are not Glocks. Not Glocks. Yeah. You I know? mean, we had a. Uh, I I'm not sure if it was a staccato night 2011. I think he had a staccato mm-hmm. 2011 out there. Uh, that gun ran great, and those guns are workhorses. Yeah, uh, we had one Beretta ninety two. Dude, that, so I was I was working right with him because yeah. he was next to Uriel the whole time, and uh, I mean I hate Berettas just yeah. because that's what they had us. That's what they gave us in the army. I hate them too. And then they also the army does not do any proficient pistol like skill building. Yeah. They just don't. Yeah. You just go out to the range with your Beretta. I'm like, okay, put some targets up. Yeah. And that's why Rangers suck at shooting pistol. But uh, that gun looked like it ran fucking perfect. Yeah, he didn't have any problems with the whole the, time. With the you we know, had a bunch of MMPs. The MMPs all ran well. Um, we had a bunch of Sig 365s and 320s, and the guns typically ran well. But there was a couple of magazines that were having some issues uh, with the dirt and the sand getting that inside the magazine, and then jamming up the follower. Mm-hmm. But that's part of the gun. That's part of the weapon system. Maybe the most important part Maybe, of the weapon yeah, system. Yeah, I would, I would if, agree. If you can't keep it fed. If you can't put bullets in it, then what's the fucking point? Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a no-go for me. That's a critical issue. So um, we got those people Glocks for their second or last day, and no problems, right? Yep. You know, and then even like, you know, uh, there was Rachel, I think, who came up to me and was like, do you want a you're right, Greg Lappin? Like, do you want to thank you and a you're right? Yeah, you're said, fucking right. I, said, I do. No, no, no. I said I know. <laughs> yeah, I, said, I, don't I know. I'm, I don't need it. I know I'm right. Well, well, let's. <laughs> and that is because she said, "Hey, look, none of my gear is working. None of my gear is working. What should we do? What should we do? Yeah. You should put a Glock on your hip for the rest of the class. Yeah. Well, what about this? <laughs> well, what about that? Well, what about this? Well, why did you ask well, us? Well, why the fuck did you ask us, Rachel? But <laughs> then we're like, you know what? This is what's happening. You're shooting a Glock for the rest of the day. You don't have a choice now. <laughs> <laughs> but she shot great the rest of the day, and she enjoyed it, and she didn't have to deal with any malfunctions. She could just worry about learning, you know, and not have to worry about her gear. Well, and that's a, that's a big concern because, like, if you're already a little apprehensive about what's going on around you, i.e. Rachel Anderson, dude... To then have to worry about an additional stressor, like you're you're still just trying to put together like okay, sight and do, trigger, yeah, <laughs> or like you know for for the reload drills, where do I hold the gun, or when I'm pinching it between my knees, like even you can slow the drills down. There's still a there's still a methodology that you need to go through, mm-hmm. and then if you're fucking having to deal with a bunch of unforeseen issues. It just causes that like fucking vapor lock, you oh, know. Yeah. But that's also part of the learning curve, right? You learn your 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 equipment. Yeah. Oh, yeah, gear, for sure. What's what works, what doesn't, what what you can improve, how you well, can bro, improve. Well, th- bro, that's exactly what I said to her too. I'm like, "You're super frustrated that none of this shit is working right now and all your mags are fucking jammed." I said, "This is the best thing that could have happened." Because if you waited to find that out, with your concealed carry that this gun actually doesn't perform very well when you need it to perform, there's your fucking problem. Yeah, yeah. This is what training's for. It's good, it's, you know? You said it to the students. Uh, I, I said it to a bunch of guys that were on, on one of the sides of the line. I said, that's one of the best things about going to a shooting course, like a professionally run shooting course, is you learn my holster broke. Fuck. Mm-hmm. My belt sucks. My holster doesn't fit right, or it's too hard. The retention sucks. My holster's anything. flopping around below my knee. Shout out, Ron. Right. But he fixed himself. <laughs> um, you know, stuff, bag pouches, magazines, you know, all that stuff. And, yeah, you want to get it fixed in training before you have to get it fixed out in the real world, you know. Um, but, yeah, we saw that, you know, this this class. And, um, again, Glocks for the win. Mm-hmm. I was- even though I'm not a Glock fanboy, I swear they just go bang every single time. And I mean, look at me—you know, doing my demos. I was standing right in that mud puddle. Yeah. And I was 
my drop in your mags. Dude, my mags were getting dumped in the fucking mud. Just wiping them off, like, shaking them off. Barely, yeah, yeah. And just still, the gun ran like a fucking scalded dog. You know, like no issues. Um, my vortex optic performed flawlessly. I had no issues with that. And dude, I smashed it around this weekend hard. Did you? Oh, dude, I, 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 I kind of marred up the shroud a bunch and stuff. And I was actually, I kind of almost want to see if I could. So I was being a little deliberate with it, uh-huh. but uh, I was worried about breaking the glass because it's it's not real deep in the shroud, and I was racking the fuck out of it off my uh, Kydex mag pouch mm-hmm. and off my Cobra belt buckle on my on my gun belt when I was doing like the single handed manipulations just to show them like if you have a red dot, just rack the fuck out of it on anything, the wood stick, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. and there's no issues at all. So I was happy with that. Fuck yeah. And, like, I mean, Vortex has been fucking rad to us. We have an official partnership with them now. They want to be the main sponsor of Guns and Geese. And, uh, I mean, fuck, for the Top Shooter Award, they gave each one of them an optic that was almost as as valuable as the tuition to attend the course. You know? So, yeah, if you're a good shooter, you could come down here. And damn near make money. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. No, it's, I mean, it was awesome. And yeah, again, you know, talk about salt of the earth people. And, you know, realistically, you know, I think the, the thing with Vortex is that um, they represent and they live what our, 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 our spirit and what our discipline embodies. 100%. You yeah. know, like our principles. Like I said to the students, you know, and I, I, even the bonfire night, I was talking to a couple of guys off to the side in private. And uh, I, was, I think maybe it was Brady, and he was like, man, what you guys have created is different. And he's like, I've been to a bunch of courses. I've been to a bunch of different stuff. I've trained jiu-jitsu. I've fought MMA, all this stuff. And uh, he's like, you guys, what you have is different. And I said, here's the deal. I said, I, have, I don't have uh, a big, tight circle. I've got a, a, I've got a few guys that I'm very, very, very tight with. My, I keep my circle pretty limited. But these guys are passionate. And I said it on the mat yesterday, but you guys are passionate – not at the expense of your principles, right? Mm-hmm. You're passionate not when it's convenient. You're not passionate when it's in, when it's financially beneficial for you. You your principles are in line with your passion. And same thing with Vortex. You know, like Vortex, they kind of they feel that same way. You feel that passion when we you, we went up there, dude. You feel that passion, but beyond that, you feel their principles, and they're not willing to falter their principles for their business and bro and and sitting in Seamus's office being the president of the company sure I mean there's probably a lot of companies where the president is passionate and he believes in the mission and he thinks like it's the greatest thing right but you where, where the where the proof is and the pudding is where you walk around and you meet every single one of the employees and, dude, you don't have to have a conversation with people to get their vibe and get their energy. Hell no. Like, we walk around and shake everybody's hand. From Rose, who is clean, the toilets. Cl- cleaning the bathrooms, yep. to, you know, to all the guys down at the edge, you know, in the, in the range complex and everything. Yeah. And, dude's like, I mean, th- there's fucking guys there that are basically scientists, you know? Like, manufa- like milling new ideas and, yeah. and putting it through all these different, like, rigorous testing protocols and stuff. But no matter what people's position were there, A, they were allowed to bring their dog to work. Which is rad. And B, they just have, a, they just have good vibes to them. And so that's how you know people are doing something right. Oh, yeah. And that's, why they're, and that's honestly why I believe, like, First Form and Vortex, companies like that, where they put the people first... That's why they're doing so well right now. Yeah. Because people feel that shit. You yeah. know? It's fucking awesome, dude. Um <clears throat> should we give a should we give a little teaser? So I was just about, thinking, are, are about, we talking about August? About two point oh. Are we talking about August? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Fuck it. Joao. Man, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm I'm in. in. There anyways, you know? All right, breaking news. Yeah, breaking news. <laughs> do, do we have a breaking news sound? I think <laughs> drum roll, please. Um we're gonna do a guns and geese pilot course so it'll, it is going to be a half class 15 uh, yeah i mean i think the profile we may decide to lengthen it again but no no, no i mean in, in amount oh, of attendees the amount of attendees yes 15 spots that's it it's yep. going to be limited to 15 and it's going to be open to alumni only alumni only 
And it's going to be carbine and pistol. Carbine, pistol, guns and geese, 2.0. Alumni, preferably, that have continued their jiu-jitsu training because the jiu-jitsu is going to be much more. Yeah, we were talking th about yeah. this this morning. He's got about, it. Like, what, what he need for that course. Uh, on my opinion, because it's going to be a little bit more advanced, right, on the, on the range side and the mat side, too, alumni only, but only those who are training jiu-jitsu regularly. Yeah. Because once we, we, we pump the, the level, right, or if somebody's there who's not used to that, you're going to drag the whole class. You're gonna get left, and they're going to get left behind. Uh, that's the point. Yeah. We, we don't left nobody behind, and we don't want to do that, right? So you also don't want somebody dragging the class for lack of skills, right? Yeah. So our whole point on Guns and Geese War, not make them capable, but open their eyes and let them go after and be capable after Continue that. Continue the journey. Yeah. You know, so um, I think these two, two, two prerequisites are very important. You know, you're being an alumni, you have gone through our basic training, right? So now that you know how to, to manipulate the, a gun, a, a pistol, right? You're good to, to do again, right? Yeah. And go further. Same with jiu-jitsu, right? But we cannot teach de la riva guard spider guard and how to pass those guards if you're not training Doing it yeah, yeah, yeah if yeah. you if you're still on a get learning how to you know to, to do technical stand-ups yeah yeah right yeah so are we are we putting people on on notice so they can start looking at their calendar and uh get like are we throwing out a date yet yeah, yeah. it's gonna be we say august Fifth and sixth, August fifth and sixth. Let's right. make that official right but, now. But not only that, but not only the date uh, that's yes. going to happen in Washington, right? Five six. Yes, yes. it is in Washington. It's It'll be cool. at my electric jiu jitsu and land, right? Yep. And, and then cool. our new land, and it'll be August fifth and sixth, two day carbine and pistol course so and advanced jiu jitsu for all the alumni guys who want to attend and are not training jiu jitsu right now. Go train, and then you're good to go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got you got like what three three months to three months to to, to get to, your shit yeah, together to get to get in good shape, to to train jujitsu, be able to 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 understand what you're gonna do, able to perform the movements you're gonna do. Yep. Right. I'm coming out with uh, so the 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 class will be officially announced and set up to be registered. You know, and then probably in the next week or so. Um, yeah, this won't come out for probably 10 days yeah so maybe by the time you're hearing this registration will be open on on vita oh, yeah we need to coordinate that with this that's what i'm saying they need to hear this first and then we'll open up registration okay but <laughs> and i also just want to say the reason why we want alumni it's not that in three days we make you guys the best shooters in the world but you we get to observe your firearms handling a yeah, big part of it is safety, and then a big part of it is you know now what is expected of you. You know, yeah, yeah. you know what our standards are on the range and on the mat, and we don't have to re like you know the first day really the first whole day we're getting through curriculum, but we're grooming them to perform what we want them to perform on day two and three. Yeah. That's what the first day is really about, you know. Whether it's from from break falls to happy baby to technical stand up, to fight stance to fight stance, like that's getting them ready for, you know, ogoshi or or blast double or, or cow catcher on days two and three. And then same thing with me, like the safety rules, the draw stroke, the dry fire, just the fundamentals of marksmanship. That's merely getting them ready. Yeah. For, you know, on day day two and three. Yep. So. They know the standard. They know what's expected of them. We know them from a safety standpoint already. And I mean, and the truth is, our attendees, we haven't had any fucking safety concerns, no, right? Everyone's been really It's been really, awesome. Really good. But what we don't want, if you get someone that is a safety hazard and, and they're only going through a pistol-only course, that's going to be a lot easier to manage than somebody... Now with two firearms, transition drills, right. and they're just not ready for it. So that's, that's right. why we make it a prerequisite. And that's what this, from the firearm side, um, this is going to focus on more or less the civilian urban application of a carbine 
or law enforcement, it's going to be uh, close range distances inside of 25 yards mm-hmm. with a carbine. And we're going to super quickly breeze over the fundamentals of marksmanship again with the carbine, move right into reloads, malfunction drills, because the carbine is a more complicated mechanism than a pistol. You can't just um, use the Army sports acronym? Sports, slap, pull, pull observe, observe, release, release tap, tap, squeeze. Squeeze or shoot somebody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You no. know more military acronyms than me, and you were never in the military. It <laughs> they taught boggles us the same, my fucking mind. They taught dude. us the same fucking stupid acronyms too. <laughs> you know? um, but uh, it was actually the CAG guys. I remember I'd been in regiment for a while, uh-huh. and they're like, "It's fucking slapping rack on this, just like it's slapping rack on this." That's right. Yeah, yeah. Don't fucking yeah. overthink it yeah. and make it more confusing than it needs to be. But for like for those guys, we're gonna go into. Um, uh, charging handle impingement mm-hmm. malfunction, which is a critical malfunction. It's very easy to clear, but if you don't have, if you've never done it, you don't know how to do it. It'll f- complete your fucking guns out of the battle, and you can slap, you can tap rack as much as you want, and it'll never fucking work. Um, we're gonna go over um, catastrophic double feed, where the two tips of the bullets are wedged into the fucking chamber. Just the tips and the lugs, just the tips. Okay, both of them, yep. but for way more than a second. Two tips and two tips. Two tips are jammed into one hole. Are jammed into one hole. Okay, but way more than a second just to see how it feels. They're <laughs> stuck in there, and we got to pry them out. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna go into a bolt override as well. And the bolt override's tricky. And same thing, if you've never seen it, it's very easy to clear. But if you don't know what it is, if you've never seen it, your gun's fucked forever. Yeah. Like it's done. You can slap and rack and pull and shake it and look at it and finger fuck it all you want, and the gun's never going to work Yep. unless you had to clear it. So we're going to go into malfunctions, and then we're going to go right into transition drills, how to transition. And then the whole weekend is going to be us uh, forcing reloads, forcing malfunctions, them having to transition, finish the drill with their pistol, gas their rifle back up, make it ready, and drive on. And we're going to go all over different carry positions, you know, from low ready to high ready to threat ready to break down to over the shoulder, all the different manipulation positions and sling management. And it's going to blow fucking people's minds. Fuck yeah, dude. Because as much as I love shooting I can't the pistol, wait, dude. like as, as energetic as I am on the range shooting the pistol, as much as I love shooting the pistol, and I do, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm on, I go to 11 on the rifle. <laughs> well, I was telling you the same thing and like growing up in the regiment that's our shit your m4 is your shit Mm -hmm. you know like i didn't start to even know how pistols operated until i was with triple canopy right you know so like i mean i'm excited to fucking learn from you and see all your tips and tricks because you haven't let me down yet but i'll never uh, let you down (laughs) no it's gonna be cool man and uh you know we don't have a price point yet you'll fucking see that when you go to registration but here's the truth of it we still have cadre. We still have flights. We still have all of the expenses, but we have half of the students. So if this is something that's important to you, then just know like the price point's the price point. We don't think about like, dude, how are we going to make the most fucking money? No. But what we do think about is how we can bring value, but also sustainability. I mean, we got people flying all over the country for this yeah. to make it happen both cadre and students and it's just this shit gets expensive fast yeah. it is what it is yep. you know yep you'll have to bring your own geese uh there will be no geese with this one yep but i've got some ideas that we won't drop yet roger yeah, that I've got some ideas for them to receive something mm-hmm. when they arrive that's like guns and geese special yeah, yeah um and then the other side of it is like my for a half class my jiu-jitsu academy is half the size of your jiu-jitsu academy yeah so I think it'll be a good option as a pilot program to run a half class. I'm in the process of, as everybody knows, of expanding my academy. And contrary to what Rachel Anderson wants, I'm not going to have the layout. Of, of the Vita? I, it has to be identical <laughs> to, to Vita. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal, Rachel. If you pay for the build-out, you can choose the layout. <laughs> well, just wait and she, until she walks into the new Vita because it ain't going to look anything <laughs> like this. It's going to look more like electric. <laughs> but if I'm paying for the build-out, I get to choose the layout. I, uh, that dude, seems reasonable. <laughs> dude, I had this talk with a couple parents from another gym. They came and brought their kids down here to cross-train with our kids. And like, man, we love your gym. The seating's amazing. The seating's so much com- more comfortable than where we train. We love it. I was like... 
Cool. This, this is in bleachers. The, in, in the next gym. These are metal bleachers. <laughs> there, in their gym, it is. And in the next gym, the seating's going to suck. And oh, I, told yeah. <laughs> him, I told him, I said, the next gym that I'm building out, I said, there's going to be wooden benches for the parents to sit on. I'm going to make sure they're super uncomfortable because I'll be honest with you. I don't want the parents sitting there watching. It causes all kinds of problems. I got to yell at parents for trying to coach their kids who don't know shit. I got to yell at kids for looking at their parents every time they get in trouble with me or do something wrong. I'm like, dude, go I wait have, outside. I have to vent on this for a second because listen, coaching your kid that is attending a class that you are not in charge of, that in itself is kind of unreasonable. Super unreasonable. It's disrespectful. Sit there, sit there, observe. And if you have pointers that you want to bring up to your kid, take notes. And then when you go home, and because a lot of my dad's train, right? For sure. Mine too. But this is what I find. You know who's given the most advice? Or the dads that have never trained. Right. I know. And, uh, dude, I will have, I will see things like you got a little boy mounted on another little boy. And the dad is saying, scissor sweep, scissor sweep. And it's like, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, dude, my girls used to do gymnastics and I used to go and watch practice. I can't even imagine when they're on the fucking like duck and roll, yeah, uh, uh, par- par- double parallel <laughs> yeah. back roll, like Bro, just it's... just yelling random terms out that mean nothing with what's going on right now because it's clear as day they don't understand and they don't know jujitsu because of the terminology they're using. So what gives them the confidence to just be bursting out and saying that? It's, it's the lack of being there, you know, man, mm-hmm. because like right nowadays my daughter is training wrestling, right? She trains with my with my coach, right? Jacob Harmon. Shout out. And, yeah. What's, what's his wrestling called again? Uh, what? Church Boys. Church Boys. Yeah. Church yeah. Boys, Teen Thunder. Uh, and bro, same thing. My daughter has been training jiu-jitsu for what? She's 13, she's four, she's nine years, right? I'm her coach in jiu-jitsu. But... When she's on Jake's mat. Jake's her coach. Jake's, Jake's her coach. coach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And she's only there because I trust the guy with my life. <clears throat> yeah, You know what I course. mean? I trust my daughter's life, my life with him. So, you know, uh, of course, even though she has all this training, all these titles, she's a, she's a little uh, beast. She's still looking outside to me, you know, like when she's in trouble, I don't know what to do. But I don't want to be her coach over there, right? That I'm her dad, right? So at the end of the day, bro, she's, she look at me once, twice, I'm out. Yeah. You know, I'm not coaching her. I'm not staying there. Yeah, step outside. You know, she's going to have to, to figure out herself. And whenever she needs help, the coach is there, yeah. you know? And that's why she's there. Because in my opinion, I, I couldn't put her to train with better coach than that, right? And, the, and my trust on him allows me to simply leave and come back one hour, sure. two hours later because he trained less forever, right? And I just got at the end. And of course, um, he's my friend. Uh, I always talk to him at the, uh, when, I, when I see him and ask how things are going, right? And uh, it's about trust, right? So, so I try to don't, don't be around. The same way I don't like to parents coaching around and yeah. all that. And electric jiu-jitsu, it's a small gym. We have like, few seats for parents you know like and sometimes man you should i should have more seats but you know what no. i don't have it because these guys are, st- yeah, yeah, yeah. are seeing exactly no what seats I- bro <laughs> no seats i, I kind of i kind of like that man because last time i was at the airport flying home from uh fuck where did i just go i don't even remember wisconsin wisconsin there you go you got me i was foam rolling with my or no i was rolling my back on a little lol doll that i bought and i looked up at the seating and it's actually they're very comfortable chairs and there's like, it's all one fucking unit mm-hmm. with like 20 chairs. Yep. But I think every three, there's like a narrow little table yes. for like a water bottle or yeah. something. And I was like, man, that might be the way to go, you know, because it's comfortable. All the fucking, the little brothers and sisters that they're bringing and they got their fucking crackers and their goldfish and shit. I was like, maybe that's the way to go. But I kind of like your guys' approach too. make it uncomfortable. I'm doing wooden benches. I'm going to do wooden benches on the Un- walkway. Unsanded. So they're narrow. Burrs all over. For sure. Splinters. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then that way they can slide bags and shoes and stuff underneath the benches. Right? So it's kind of like built-in cubbies almost. I like that. Um, Economy of space. And then if they really want to sit, they'll sit. And yeah. If, if they don't want to sit, they'll go wait outside. But man, and, uh, like parents need to th- hear what Joe Ouch has said. Like, 
a world champion grappler with great high level wrestling. I'm not saying shit at wrestling practice because I'm not coaching. Oh, that. You, you know, and it's a, and that doesn't that actually sounds very reasonable. Dude, Wednesday nights usually usually Jake coaches for my kids' class for me Wednesday nights. Uh-huh. Right? You guys know Jake, one of my blue belts, tough bro. He's really good at teaching the kids. That's cool, like man. really and, good. And that's an art, dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, you know, obviously, like I didn't just send him off right away. He started coaching with me under me, you know, being my assistant, and then. There was, you know, as he grew, I said, hey, no, you run this class, man. And I just stood on the mat and was there, helped him, you know. And then, all right, hey, he's, he told me one day. He's like, I have my Jake, too. He's like, man, coach. He's like, Jake professor, too. you're I tired. I got class tonight. You're tired. So I sat at the front desk. Now, when he coaches class, this is my fucking gym. My son's out there. I go outside. Mm-hmm. When he's coaching class, I go outside because – I, I am passionate about this, but I don't want to be overshadowing him. I don't yeah, want to yeah. micromanage it's him. It's about trusting, too. And, like, the other point, too, from the parents that don't train, how disrespectful is it and what does it show to your kid that you are you know more than the professor yeah. that's coaching Yep. You? What's that say to your kid? Well, and, and then here's another thing about Jake. I mean, he is a collegiate wrestler, right? Yeah, I think he wrestled he, through high school. But oh, I, I thought he wrestled in college, too. At a pretty too. high level at high school. And but still, like, MMA. he holds a skill set that – you have in some aspects, right. but not in all the aspects right. that he Absolutely. has. For sure. You know? So if you want him to be a value add to the academy because you look at his skill set, you see how he performs, and then how he passes that knowledge to others, man, just let him run with it. Let him fly. And he told me the other day, because uh, what was it, the, last week, the, the curriculum was like double leg or something. Uh-huh. He's like, hey, professor, I have this, uh, this double leg transition that I think would be great for the kids. I'd love to show them. Can I show you to make sure you're okay? I'm like, dude, you're good. Fuck yeah. You don't need to show me anything, bro. Bro, I, I've got trust in you to do the right thing and then adjust based on their needs. Go for it. If you think it's good for the kids, run with it, dude. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like, fuck yeah. So Jake sounds like he has his shit together in most aspects of his life other than consuming alcoholic beverages and challenging black belts to, <laughs> to fights. To- <laughs> Joe, you heard that story, right? No. Bro, you? me... I mean, I don't know what I, I don't know. Was I down here for guns and geese or whatever? But me and Lappin were out at a restaurant and Jake was at the bar drinking and he fucking walks up. He stumbles over. He's clearly intoxicated. He's like, Hey professor, I'm going to smash you tomorrow. (laughs) I said, yeah, 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 he was. was And I said, Roger that. I'll see you tomorrow. And he loves it too. It's all good fun. It was fun. It was, no, it was, and even when he came up, he wasn't being a dick. We were having fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know him. And I was like, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. You better stop drinking, you know? (laughs) Well, bro, what he told me, so like Wednesday, uh, not Wednesday night, Tuesday night. We're not done with the story. He already got smashed by me for being the same way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) But dude, in a good way, but of course, (laughs) I don't even remember what I hit. Cause I, dude, I'm not a judo guy, but I know some judo and I fucking hit a throw on him. Wow! Oh, like it's, Miles. it's like the one you hit on me this week. No, no, no. That was a, <laughs> different. That was a double leg. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know the gentle double leg. I only know I only know the electric jujitsu. No, that was not. No, the double leg was one of them. What about the? It was like the, the Ogochi. Ogochi. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah, throw yeah, yeah, yeah. boom. So, my bad. <laughs> I, I know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, do you remember? Like, do you remember when you used to teach us wrestling? This was like 2013. And it would be King of the Mountain double legs. Uh huh. And we do rotation training, yep. everyone on the wall, yep. and we're just gonna wrestle as hard as we fucking Bro, I'm can. A fucking hour. Bro. Bro. Rotation. Boom, boom, I did, boom. dude. I did, Bro. Get, I did King of the Mountain to, today, this morning, for the last 15 minutes of class. King uh-huh. of the Mountain. Everyone on the wall, first two out, whoever wins stays in until they lose, go. <laughs> no, that was my shit. I love that, dude, because yeah. it was like, all right. I never, I didn't, I wrestled as a little boy, like fucking middle school in the first year of high school, but I never had rest, like real wrestling, you know? And then being an electric for a while, I was like, dude, I'm, I can fucking take people down now. Fuck yeah, finally. Yeah, <laughs> finally, I can fucking take people down. But no, that's why, I mean, we have all continued to hone that culture at our gyms and not like the, the, the necessarily the hard wrestlers grind, but like, bro, it was you. You told me like, man, if you don't have takedowns, you don't have jujitsu. You don't. That's it. You don't. Bro, if you if you think about that, 90% of self-defense in jiu-jitsu are about takedowns, you know, and then holding, and you don't have to fight on the ground. The, mm-hmm. the ground fighting is not self-defense. Ground fighting is, is the sport side of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Right? Because 
if you have to use jujitsu or the takedown self defense slash self defense on someone, it's because that person doesn't know how to 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 deal on the ground either. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's unnecessary to know ground fighting for self defense. If you yeah, as, as long as you know the 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 fundamentals, the, the, the fundamentals of self defense slash takedowns, you know. But bro, here's the other side of it too: is like, I don't care what level of grappler you are. For example, like at my academy, me and Daniel, Daniel is like on par with me, right? We're very close in skill set, and it's a coin toss of who's gonna win when we slap and bump. And more often than not, the person that gets the advantageous position out of the gates, that person wins the fight. Yep. You know, so if you can get, you also, can also because you have what five minutes to decide the the, the match, right? Yeah. So there's not much. It's like masters fighting yeah. masters turn jiu jitsu yeah, yeah, tournaments, yeah. right? Usually, who score first? That's who wins. <laughs> That's for sure. really, you know? absolutely. So you have to really <clears throat> fight hard the first uh, portion of the fight. To decide who's gonna run after to 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 get the win. Yeah, because I mean, if you get a takedown, even if you end up in their guard, if you're just dead set on hanging out there, yeah. I mean, it's a fucking problem, you know. So and and plus, like, starting on your feet. I always tell my students this, even if you're not there on like. Craig's wrestling class. We have a wrestling class. It's like focused on takedowns, right? Mm -hmm. But not everybody attends that and not everybody. And then we do takedowns as part of our warm ups and stuff too. But I think where people really make their money is just every round starts on your feet. Yeah. Yep. And you start to develop a high level of comfort and you're going to learn how to sprawl or how to fucking pull your leg back when someone's. No, even even you know? guard puller. You even learn how to pull guard. Yeah, I was yeah, say, you learn you how to pull train guard. how to pull guard. Yeah, yeah. From the standing position. Otherwise, you get yeah. passed on the pole. Yeah, exactly. you don't you don't train how to pull guard by starting on your knees or your butt. No. Yeah. You know, so like whether you're I, taking like I, or, I always said, you never saw a good fight starting from the knees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. For sure. <laughs> never. You're never gonna see. Bro, I remember I saw a DVD on like. Uh, well, what is it? BJJ whatever that it sells all the DVDs. Fanatics. BJJ, BJJ Fanatics, Fanatics, yeah. And it says, it was takedowns from the knees. And I was just like... Uh, was it a joke? Uh, no, that's a real DVD. Takedowns from the knees. Because so many academies start, on start from their knees. And bro, I've had... Uh, I, f I forget Blast who it was. One of my... I th might have been Stanaway. It was someone who's been with me for a while. And they were like a blue or a purple belt. They go, dude, Greg, <laughs> you're not going to fucking believe this. I visited this other academy. And bro, they made us start from sitting, dude, and like yeah. was laughing. Yeah. And I said, bro, that's the norm, the norm, dude. And he's like, what? Yeah. What are you talking about? You know? And so, dude, and tell me what you think of this. When my mats are so packed that like, okay, blast doubles are just a concern out of space. There's a guard player and a guard passer. That's how we start. Like an open guard, some person's going to be play guard player, some person's going to be guard passer. And I feel like that's still going to hone your jiu-jitsu without the element of a takedown. So, uh, and I'll do something similar when the mat is so full that like fighting for the takedown can be dangerous. I will say, all right, you're going to drill whatever takedown you want. Second you hit the mat, it goes live. Got it. So there's like a gentleman's agreement. Hey, I'm going to run a, right, a you, single. Hey, you, you go first. You don't even have to tell me what takedown you want, but you're going to go first. And I'm going to, we're live drilling it, live drilling it, but I'm not really resisting. Boom, you take me down. Now, now we're, we're live. live. If you sub me or I sub then you, it switches. then we get back up. Now it's my turn to do the drill of whatever takedown I want. I do different on my pack days. I uh, pull guard. It's two points. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts standing, but no yeah, takedowns yeah. allowed. Whoever pulled the Whoever guard, pulls first. it's two points. The other guy have to run after yeah, it from yeah, the top. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's a way to start standing and work another fundament. For sure. Fundamentals. Yeah. And then you're getting all the double pulls. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Also because, like we were talking about this weekend, right? Uh, make sure your landing zone is clear, right? Yeah, so you yeah. don't crash someone on the way. But... My mats are small, you know, so we don't take m many, many people to, to, to get it full. But of course, w w if you have space, everything goes, right? Just the back days, you know, yeah. in order to, to keep things safe, you know, 
pull the guard it's two points yeah you know? bro there's and a that creates a different element yeah. on the game you're right but it's still the same basic thing yeah you know? yeah, yeah for sure do you remember when like i mean fuck electric jiu-jitsu's 10-year anniversaries in two months yes when i remember your one-year anniversary yeah. right and like uh the mats would be packed we're wrestling yeah. smashing it's into fucking, the windows and shit you put that plexiglass up dude like we just make it fucking happen dude yeah. and it felt like the those old school academies where like part of rolling is rolling over the people to your left and your right and that's <laughs> this is life dude. It is, man. you know but then again i mean we've we've matured as coaches and had like long conversations about it that's cool for some people. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's also not cool for a lot. That, that's going to take a lot of people out of their comfort zone. I know, definitely. But those days were like, we didn't have like uh, fundamentals. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Intermediate and advanced program. That was one program. It was one shark tank. If you survive, you come back and then you start paying, right? Yeah, <laughs> paying yeah, the tuition. Yeah. yeah, it's Charles and <laughs> yeah. Sid and Miles. Yeah, we have, like Savage. Uh, Ernie. Is Ernie still with you? No, man. Oh, where'd Ernie like, go? Uh, Ernie is... Going some doing something now. His son, you remember Ernie? Yeah, Jr.? yeah of course. Bro, Ernie, Ernie Jr. Ernie was Jr. Is like than... six four, six five nowadays, bro. He's a monster. And he's still with you? He's still with me. Like nowadays, he's he's thirty and doing his thing on the on the on the medical field. He's he's a good kid. He's doing very well. Uh, but he's still showing up sometimes. Yeah, you know. And he's because he's doing me for so long, bro. So he's the kid that sometimes pulled me on the side, asking me to, to talk to me about life, about decisions, you know. He's still a great kid, but he has a busy life right now. He's yeah. still going sometimes. Hey, they'll come back to jiu-jitsu. Oh, yeah, definitely, you know. So uh, that's how I feel about it, you know. We're like, you know, I give him love, and whenever he, he feels he should come back, he comes back, yeah. and that's all good. Yeah. Um, fuck, man, I remember those days, like, <laughs> remember Tess? Is, T is Tess your brown belt? No, bro, not Tess nowadays, like, black belt. That wasn't from you, though, right? No. She no. went to another she academy? She I think, on the purple belt with me or blue belt or something like that. Bro, I bro, don't... she was a savage, bro. I, bro, I don't think I've ever told you the story before. What? So, I mean, and Tess is, like, a, a small, very pretty girl. Like, what's she weigh, 120 or something, you know? One, one, almost 130. 130. She's kind of girl because she's pretty well... She's mute. strong. Yeah. yeah. She's one of those girls that, like looks like a model but when you lock horns with her it's like, like oh, oh fuck, oh, yeah, fuck. Yeah. and so but you're still you're you're at the time i was a brown belt and you're rolling with a blue or purple belt female whatever it was and it's just <clears throat> rolling accordingly right right and I, I got to her back and bro i did not cross my feet or do anything <laughs> that like violates jujitsu principles but she did some weird hook and tur was turning her hips and it was like, like heel uh, it was like heel toe, toe hook. It you? was heel hooking me <laughs> when I was on her back, right. and I felt my knee was like getting ready to explode. Did you tap? Fuck no! Dude. <laughs> Did you tap for ego? No, no, <laughs> bro. Hey, I'm noticing hey. a trend <laughs> here, bro. <laughs> bro. I, bro, I was like, dude, they're like, he doesn't tap to foot shit. He lets yeah. it break. <laughs> hey, bro, that's what the Meow Brothers say. They say, man, you know, I, I was reading or watching an interview. Like, I don't, I don't, we don't really tap to foot stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's like what does that mean? <laughs> you because know? that is like that is hurting and hurting bad. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if it's just hurting, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But bro, like, I remember. I was like instant panic because I was like, there's there's no way I can tap out to this small, pretty little female in a legitimate tap, too. It's not like, right. you know how we we were saying, like, we'll let people work, right. but I won't let you submit me. Right. Like, this would have been 100% she fucking got, got me, yeah, yeah, right? It, yeah. And I was like, no, and just like had to fucking spaz out. But I remember coming to that same conclusion, like... I guess I'll, I'll lose my knee over this if I have to, which is so <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid. But at the same time, like it's kind of how we're wired too. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have to a girl twisting on your uh, foot. Depend, depend on the situation. <laughs> depend on how bad it was, you know. <laughs> I told you that story about my, my student faith. I don't know. The dude that was going a little rough with her, she was pretty new at the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's hear it. Faith's been with me now for 
mm, I don't know, a year and a half. You know, well, you, you, know you also, much. every time a, a girl is about to tap you, you can start teaching her how to do better. You know? <laughs> good, good, Bro. good. Yeah, no, a little, no, no. Deep, oh, little yeah. deeper now. Yeah. No, no. Bro, I had a coach. <laughs> yeah. I had a coach that that was my introduction to jiu-jitsu. And I was doing MMA at the time. So I was able to do things that were kind of outside of normal gi jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what he would do. And yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah. I, I've yelled at a couple of students of mine for doing that. I hear them doing it in a role. Like, hey, this is a role. This is not training. Stop coaching them and either escape or tap. Yep. Fuck Stop yeah. fucking Fuck coaching yeah. them. This right. is a role. This is not time to coach. Sorry to cut you off on, yeah, your yeah. Faith, on your faith story. So she was still fairly new when this was going on, maybe four months. And she's very quiet and very shy and very, very reserved. And she's a, she's a young, pretty girl. And I have this one guy and... He's pretty athletic. He's not a big guy, but pretty athletic, and he's being a little rough with her. And he's got her back now. And I can see it on her face. Like, her face is starting to panic. And I walk right over, and I stand over, and I'm just my voice. Faith, you're fine. Grab his wrist. Protect your neck. Okay, good. Take your right leg. Loop it over his foot. Because his feet were crossed. I didn't say shit to him. I said, take your right leg. Loop it over his foot. She's, and they're going, and they're rolling, and she's panicking. I'm like, you're fine. Just breathe. Just hold his wrist. Take your foot. Bring it over. I said, now, bring your heel to the butt and throw your hips forward as hard as you can. Oh. I didn't give a fuck if she ripped his foot off because I was pissed because he was going hard with her. I said, grab. Now, as hard as you can. Foot back. Hip forward. Go. And he went, ah, damn, ah, damn. <laughs> and he, he fucking almost ripped his foot off. And I was like, hey. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> and, I, and I looked at him on the ground as he's writhing in pain. I'm like, that's why you don't cross your feet, motherfucker. <laughs> Is he still here? Is yeah, he yeah. still with he's us? Still, no, he's still okay. here. He's still here. And he's a good dude. And he learned the error of his ways because right after that, Alex, Alexandra, I was like, Alex, much early. He's like, okay, professor. You know, he was like, okay, uh, did you boy? <laughs> and Bro, he fucking killed him too. But that's also like an important aspect of jiu-jitsu is like when guys show up and they bring the wrong energy to their training partners, like I'll get fucking mad about it sometimes. But then I also have to like, and sometimes they're like, dude, this is a really nice guy. Why is he doing this? Cause they just don't know. They just don't know. They yeah. just don't know like the dial yet. Yeah. And you, you definitely, you literally have to teach them. Yeah. You know, and like, and this is something like I've been, I've been working on myself, you know, bro. I'm a teacher. I cannot expect people to get to me knowing, you know, and I have to tell basically everything. And that's my, that's my, my role, right? That's what I do. That's so I've, I've been chilling more about, and when I see things wrong, I correct instead of yell, you know, yeah. kind of go in a, in an aggressive way. So, you know, it's been f working for me, you know, like yeah. being more, more, more considerate that no, people don't know and they are just acting under instinct. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. And then I, I'm the responsible. They're paying me to, to give them the technique and the, and the good maneuvers, right? And that's something I've been working on, on, on my style, the way I teach, you know, um, not expect much. You know, and teach more. Yeah, you got to remind them, reinforce it. Today at lunch, uh, so I don't know if you saw one of my guys, young guy Willis, just got out of the army, big handlebar mustache, all tatted up. Yo, Jack, super good dude, super nice dude, but he's just big and strong and tough and doesn't realize. It. And I rolled with him like two weeks ago, and he came out 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 the gate like a rape tape. And I was like, Roger this, you know, and I popped his arm, and I even I had him, and I was like, dude. I'm looking at him with this arm lock in. I'm like, tap. You're not getting out of this. Just tap. <gasps> and I started just slowly, slowly, slowly putting pressure. I'm like, you feel that? I said, tap. I'm going to rip your fucking shoulder out of your socket. And he just exploded with everything he had, thinking he could like push me up off of him. And as he did, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Now your fucking arm's broken, dude. Yeah, but now he and knows. He was fine. He was okay. Like it was a little sore. He like popped some tendons oh, it wasn't a little catastrophic. bit. Right? It wasn't okay. catastrophic. I'm like, next time I tell you to tap, you fucking tap. I said, I'm going easy on you, bro. Right? He's a good kid. He was good with it, right? He yeah, was good yeah. with it. And he's back right away and he's a good kid. Well, he's rolling with Yasmin today. Uh, who's hundred like, pounds? Who's ninety six pounds, okay. bro? And I'm like, Willis. She's 96 pounds. I heard you bro, say that. Right? I heard you say that. And from he's, like, here. he's like, okay, professor. And bro, he was awesome with her. He was yeah. great with her. Nice little flow. She had a sweep that he could feel was good. So he kind of like went with it and she swept, you know, like I was like, 
that's my boy. Yeah. Like you're building that, that life culture. lesson right there on the arm popped life lesson, bro. And you're building that culture in your gym, you know, and I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to injure anybody right in my gym. Sometimes it kind of happens, and sometimes it's for the better. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the humbling bro, side of jujitsu, yeah. right, bro? You, you you do the wrong things, you pay the price, and if you're smart enough, you don't do it again. Yeah, yeah. or you do yeah. a different way, you know, yes. a better way to yeah. do. It. Have I told you the story about Craig as a white belt? No. So, C Coach Craig, who's a brown belt now, because a fish, a fish, fish don't need to climb a tree, bro. A fish right? can't climb a tree, right? <laughs> so when he came to me as a white belt. He was a 250 pound man that had wrestled since he was a little boy. Yeah. Right. So he's a fucking problem with no jujitsu. Right. So he signs up for a local tournament called the revolution and, uh, bro, murking everybody because Craig is, he's 270, but he's strong. A lot of guys in the ultra heavyweight division in the lower belts, they're heavy, they're fat, they're, they're very fluffy. fat yeah. and weak. Yeah. Right. So he's just murking dudes murking dudes murking dudes and he gets this guy down here's the thing though craig is like looks like a biker with tattoos all over his head 270 Sweetest pounds dude ever. he's so fucking nice <laughs> so he gets this guy takes him down mounts him gets a a, a kimura and then is in the position knees pinched over his body full kimura gets it behind the guy's back and he's pushing it, and the guy starts going like, oh, oh. Hey, let's go. And he's like, you know what, man? We all got to go to work Monday morning. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to break this dude's arm. It's I, I'm clearly in the position where he should be tapping. But he's like making this conscious decision because he's a nice guy, right? Yeah. So he releases it. The guy like fucking just freaks out and flops him over and gets out. And now they're back squared up, and he's coming at him like a raped ape, right? Yeah. And Craig's like, fuck, dude. Like, <laughs> And it's basically like you hit rewind and, and, and push play again. Boom, takes him down, gets the Kimura again. Same exact position. <laughs> the guy won't fucking tap, so he's fine. Okay, boom, broke his arm. Bro, white belt jujitsu tournament. And this dude... Let his shoulder rip out of his side. Let his shoulder rip, and he's on the podium... And it's all, it's in a fucking sling and shit, and it's like what what is happening right now, bro? Bro, bro I have I seen those it. things happening on heel hooks and knee locks on. Yeah, grapper, yeah, yeah. Remember grapper, uh, grapper's Quest? Quest? Yeah, yeah, dude, grapper's Quest. Besides ATC, on my opinion, was one of the most savage tournaments around because everything was a lot. Yeah. Everything was a lot from any level, you know. And you would see dudes getting their knees like bent over, you know, just because they won the medal not knowing that bro they would pay that price basically forever they would ha always have a knee problem from that day on bro right? pants for me same thing pants for me dude qualifier first match qualifier not even like the finals or semifinals like oh i'm oh, gonna fucking me about this i'm gonna fucking morning, podium you know? and, and like okay i dude this is the finals i can podium or get a gold medal at fucking pants cool we're not adult level black belt either. We're fucking master three. Uh, uh, no one family business. Right, family care. business. No, none Money of us are, are professional athletes anymore, bro. I I fucking I turned this dude's knee from here to here. Uh huh. Fucking destroyed I'm everything. Coyote, 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 and he's fucking right boom. Now. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. I'm pulling. It's tight. He's fighting. He's fighting it. All of a sudden, just bah! The whole leg gives away and. Boom! Like I hear this loudest snap pop I've ever heard. Did, he goes, I, did I show you that, bro? If he just gives you the sweep, what's that? Did I show you that technique? By you any showed chance? me the coyote yeah, ball. Oh, what? <laughs> bro, bro, yeah. hey, dude, that's that's not only just not being willing to tap. That's not being willing to give the sweep. And I got the sweep anyway. And yeah. I took the sweep anyway. You know. And then what pissed me off even more is I got the sweep. He was able to kind of get get his guard back, and he threw a bravo grip over me, and then just one minute left, and he just held on and held on and held on and held on. And he did this one time. He did that once. The referee gave him the decision. Yeah. Then he hopped off the mat with one foot and couldn't even continue. <laughs> you know? Hey, what, that's what, what, you. <laughs> what did he say to you after? He said, man, you fuck my knee, bro. What did you say? I said, no, I didn't. You fucked your knee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like pissed, bro. He was like hopping on. Bro, he goes, you he goes, don't tap. It's not my yeah. fault, bro. He goes, it's you, your fault, bro. He goes, you fuck my knee, man. I, I said, said, no, I didn't. I said, you fucked your knee. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> Where did I hear that from? <laughs> well, uh, okay, <laughs> man. <laughs> no, I remember like... Matt philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't have a lot of tournaments that I'm like super proud of, but when I won the Seattle Open at Black Belt, yeah, yeah I remember you telling that me that was it, like, yeah. ah, because I just opened the gym and everybody else in my division, including what's his name, Jason Yusuf, Yusuf, yeah, he was there in my division, right. and bro, it was every guy in the division was from California, yeah, they all flew up. And people are like, dude, where are you from? You know, everyone's talking before yep. and all that. I'm like, my gym's like 10 minutes up the street. So I'm the only local guy. And uh, I ended up winning that division. And that was like a super proud moment for me. New gym, bunch of students there. But my wrist, dude, I fought out of a wrist lock, right? And I remember that night, my wrist was in like a fucking brace. And I was holding the medal. And I posted it. And I'm like, this is fucking, I fought out of it and I'm hurt. But I got a gold medal, yeah. and it was fucking worth it, yeah. right? It took seven months to heal. Right. And I remember thinking, like, like six months later, I'm like... That gold medal sucks. Fuck that, man. <laughs> well, I, think, I think I would trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, not real, it's not real gold. And, like, look, don't get me wrong. Like, that silver pans medal that's sitting up there, I'm pissed about that silver pans medal. That was the that one. That was that one, yeah. right? You, right? Greggy, don't move, bro. And I fucking got greedy and I moved and I got knee barred with fifty three no, seconds. Actually left. I said, Greg, be careful on the knee lock. Oh, the, and then, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, knee lock. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, maybe that guy heard Joel say careful of the knee lock. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but you know, like I knew I knew had I undone my I knew had I undone my butterfly hook to try and get closer up the back, get further up the back. I knew I was exposing myself to a knee bar, mm -hmm. but I was like, I think, like I, I think I got it. Yeah. Fuck it. I, I want to finish this dude, you know, 53 seconds left, but I don't think I would have let my knee pop. Right. Obviously I didn't. I tapped, you yeah. know, like, uh, and I don't think it's worth it for, I haven't looked at that metal really again. You know, it's not real gold or real silver anyway. Yeah. Bro, I've been choked and arm barred plenty of times in competition and I've never had a problem tapping. But wrist stuff, I'm just like, fuck you. <laughs> and been, I don't know why that is. I've been I mean, fights trying to finish people and popping them all over to the point where they attack me and I'm like, all right, bro, now I, I, I owe you not tapping to you, you know, like break it. Right, and then yeah, yeah. fortunately, like, I'm out of there. I'm like, Oof, let's go, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, dude. Um, <laughs> dude, what else? We just went so, through an hour and a half or something already. Yeah, huh? we already? Not hour and 15. All right, cool. Um, so kind of going back to guns and geese. Can you hold uh, it down for one minute while I urinate? Fuck yeah. Word. Do we want to break no, no, no. what might come uh, next year for guns and geese? Oh, yeah, let's yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. So uh, obviously guns and geese, we're always trying to evolve to make it a better program. And what we've learned is a lot of, uh, a lot of the people that come out to guns and geese are newer shooters new to jujitsu, new to grappling, and they, they need that fire lit. So we're teaming up with Vortex, uh, possibly a couple of the other sponsors, to basically offer a more uh, all-inclusive program. So when they show up, they'll have their gi bag, they're, they're with their kimono, their rash the, guard, the their normal, belt, the, the normal, normal stuff. The normal stuff. Yeah. Um, but then on the other side, they're going to have a gun range bag with an ex umbrus gun belt. That when they when they register was the one of the nicest bro, on the market, bro. That's nice. what we use. That's what we use. I have a couple, and I fucking loved. I have have a bunch. Yeah, for, by far the nicest gear. Awesome gun belts. So when they sign up now, when they go in and they register, they select their gi size. You know, I need an A two. Yep. yep. Uh, then they can select their gun belt. I want a multi cam, uh, thirty four inch. You know, mm -hmm. um, and then they'll get a Kydex holster. Do we have a sponsor for those holsters? Yeah, oh, yeah. Allegiance, nice. Allegiance holsters. Nice. He's gonna do the holsters and mag pouches for us, so we'll get a Kydex, um, Kydex natural retention. So like kind of like what we're running, uh -huh. uh, with a drop and offset, and they'll get three angled Kydex magazine pouches. Bad, uh, that's cool. With their stuff, um, we're looking at providing eyes, eye pro, and ears for them as well. Nice, bro. And then the whole uh, kit. So they they just basically. The whole kit. Show bring their, their clothes and bring their clothes, ship their ammo. And then we're working actually with interstate guns out of Hammond mm -hmm. uh, for them to be able to call, pay for their ammo over the phone, and then I go pick it all up. Nice. So all they got to do is fly with their clothes on their back. They get a gun belt. They get a holster. They get mag pouches, eyes, ears. And then we're working with Vortex that will have uh, basically for everyone in the camp, we'll have like 30 new Gen 5 Glock MOSs 
uh, 19s and 17s with their the latest Vortex RDS mounted to it already. That's badass. So they just show up. They borrow that gun for the weekend. They have all their gear. When it comes time to leave, they take all that stuff home with them. Um, but the then, gun, right? Well, we're working on the option. We'll we'll see on that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, we're working on an option so that they can purchase their pistol from the weekend from us. That's cool. So they would tell us, yeah, we want to purchase the pistol. They pay for the pistol. They give us the address of their FFL by where they live. And then when the camp is over, like this week now during our demob phase, we'd send uh, all the guns it, off. It, I think it's worth to, to, to mention that we do that with the, the, the gi, right? When the people gi, sign yeah, yeah. up, they already... They, they already get the gi, absolutely. Yeah, 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 for sure. Because like you said, you know, we've, we've talked about this before. It's like one of the reasons we don't do just the combative stuff is... I don't know. I kind of think attending a couple day combatives course is bullshit. It doesn't build any skill set or capability. What builds skill set and capability is living this lifestyle, training jujitsu two, three, four, five days a week for years, forever. You know, and that gi is going to force them to. That gun belt is yeah. going to hang next to them and go, man, I need to go to the range. They have no excuse. And also, and also I think cool, the, we have talked about that before, right? Guns and Giz one. Yeah. Uh, we're not expecting to make killers. No. out of three days but you really expect to present them with the fundamentals yeah right which they're gonna use forever yep. no matter where they're gonna train and when they're gonna train so they can go from there all right, right. and well, particularly i'm i love to be the first teacher of people and give them the the, the first instruction because you know i prepare them for life that's how i feel you know giving the first instruction you know i feel the same way about the firearms because i'll get students that have come to me like and i'm talking like even guys that have gotten a lot of instruction or attended other classes and i'll have students that have come to me that either their gun handling is horrible and very unsafe no, bro or they've got some been told some well, bullshit it's you know? crazy how i see like something you teach like very fundamental is the first thing you teach how to hold the the pistol right And that changed people's lives, bro. It changed my life. But changing, it changed you know? everybody's lives. Yeah. You know? And some people that have never held a gun on their hands learn that for the, the first way they learn how to hold a gun is the perfect way. You know what I mean? And that's huge, bro. That is the same with the jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah. If you learn the, the day one, you go down and learn the fundamentals. That's huge. Some people take years to learn those fundamentals and feel like, fuck, bro, I've been lacking so much all these years. Just from now on, I can right. finally do it right and everything else that comes with it. Yeah, yeah. You know? And yeah. that's why it's so important to like to not be one of those firearms fighting you know, courses where on day three, some guy with a red man suit jumps out and tackles you. And then you have to fight your way to your feet and you have to then draw your weapon and engage something. Cause like if that person doesn't understand their base or they don't understand shrimping or they don't understand their balance or weight distribution, like all the little nuances that make grappling possible, it's really a wasted time. It's a wasted repetition, yes. and it's a waste of time. And it's selling them snake oil if you, as the role player in the red man suit, are letting them win. Of course. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to beat the shit no. out of your students. And but bro, now you're selling them snake oil that, oh, yeah, you won. Yeah. Hey, cool. And, bro, I used to be the guy in the red man suit at sure. the police academy. Bro, I've done it, too. And it's like, okay. <laughs> no, bro, bro, they would pay me $500 a day to beat oh, up police shit. recruits. Where, where, where aside for the job, <laughs> <laughs> and bro. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Like at first, it was like, dude, this is cool. And then I realized, like, fighting untrained people sucks, bro. It gets exhausting yeah. because it's like, it's not that they're in any capac. They don't have any capacity to win, but that frantic energy, dude, it hurts like your tendons yeah, and shit, bro. man. You guys have like, trained striking, right? Like boxing, one yeah, time, yeah, of course. Bro. I don't know what's harder to 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 strike with someone against someone who's really good or someone who's really bad right yeah, because yeah, you have yeah, no idea bro. where it comes from right. you know? no that's a funny thing about fighting is there's kind of a gentleman's agreement or like an unwritten rule that it's like okay this is how I stand I lead with my jab like I you know well and we like, can touch each other with jabs and touch each other with jabs and move around and throw a hook and here and there and Then and like not hurt each other, whereas the untrained guy's gonna come in freaking with the windmill 
Yeah. And you got to fuck him up or knock him out or fucking <laughs> ring him with a kidney shot yeah. just to get him to back the fuck and up. And it's like, now, now I'm in a fight. We're not, we're not training, now we're fighting. <laughs> right. You know? Dude, one, one more thing I wanted to touch on us offering people to come down in board shorts and flip-flops and have all their gear here. I think it's important for two reasons. Because we've gotten, at least I've received a decent amount of feedback. I'm sure you guys have too. Or like, dude, I would love to attend, but I don't have a gun. I would love to attend, but I don't have a gun. You know? But then another option that we're going to have is for people that are like, oh, no, no, my my husband gave me this and I'm all set up and blah, blah, blah. Because we're not going to preclude people from training with a personally owned firearm. They can bring their own. Yeah, if they choose to do that. But how many times have we had people that are like, they realize through the course of the weekend, oh, this is actually a piece of shit. We literally just discussed that an hour ago, right? So now we can be like, okay, listen, that's a good lesson. Let's fucking run this. Yeah. And we have that option available. And it's not like, hey, Joel, do you got another Glock or whatever? You know, like we can make it work yeah. seamlessly. And then the other op- the other, the other th- benefit to it is too, like even some of the higher level shooters that have their gun, there's a lot of people that are still are not running red dots on pistols. Yeah. And it's the way. Play- it's no ifs, ands, or buts, not my opinion. It's fact. This yeah. is the way. So now you can come down and be like, oh, I want to run a red dot, but... My gun can't accommodate one. I don't want to send it off to get milled. I don't want to buy a new gun yet. Let me run a red dot on a Glock. See what you think. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like, and yeah, husbands, please, 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 like, unless you really, really legitimately have the skill set, experience, and training, don't go buy the gun you think your wife needs. Yeah. Like, please. I've never seen that work out. Like, Dude, <laughs> let me ask you this because everybody that I've talked to is like, Dude, that transition to irons to the red dot, like, I, dude, I couldn't find the fucking dot. I couldn't this. I couldn't that. Like, they paint it as this difficult thing. Bro, I spent a day on the range with you. Remember, I brought my RMR down here before we were sponsored by Vortex Optics. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, dude, it was just, it, to me, it felt like a natural transition. Well, It that's, felt easier to shoot. I was instantly faster and more accurate. For sure. And, and I'll attribute that for you. Because you're comfortable with red dots on rifles. Mm. You've been shooting red dots for a long, long time. Literally since I was 19. Just not on a pistol, right? Got so it, it made sense. I it see. made sense. Okay. People that are only used to shooting irons and aren't real familiar with red dots on rifles, maybe they've got a scoped hunting rifle, you know? Yeah. Um, they try to treat the red dot like irons. And got you've heard it. me say that. Don't look at the dot. Don't focus on the dot. Don't uh-huh. look at the dot. Look through the window at the target. You're looking through your front, the front window of your home at your kid playing in the front yard, right? That's what I want you to do. Yeah. Look through the window at the target. Just keep looking at the target. Wherever the dot lays on the target is where your bullet's going to hit. So just overlay the dot kind of where you want to hit. Bro, I forget who it was, and I wish, I wish I didn't so I could give him a shout out. But it was this weekend, and one of the students said to me, they're like, man, I was having my red dot was a nightmare, because I was trying to stay sight focused. Yeah. And he's like, dude, when Lappin said, like, stay target focus and then line the window up and continue to stay target focus, he's like, it works perfectly now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. like, <laughs> that's not some abstract concept. But if you haven't heard it before right. and you haven't been coached on it and you shoot pistol and you're front sight focused, it's a fucking game changer. For sure. And the other thing a lot of people try to do, and this is why I have that one Glock set up with no sights at all, mm-hmm. just the red dot, is they will still try to line up their irons with the red dot. Oh, yeah. Get that co-witness for you know? every shot. Yeah. So, and, and your your irons, like my irons are one-third co-witness, which means my irons only stick one-third of the way up into the window. They just barely creep over the, the back of the vortex venom. And that front sight just barely creeps over the front. So my dot sits way, way higher in the window. Uh-huh. But the dot's zeroed. But the irons are zeroed. But the, the red dot sits a lot higher. How is that possible? How is that, right? So you don't want to line. So a lot of people try to line all that shit up. Or they try to stare at the dot and treat the dot as a front sight. So it, it hurts that learning curve. Now, yeah. the other thing, and we heard it this weekend. I'm try- Again, I can't remember who it was from either. But people are worried about shooting a red dot and then having to go back to irons and shooting worse. Mm -hmm. It's actually just the opposite. It's just the opposite. And it it took a pro shooter to kind of convince me of this several years ago as well. But he said, when you're looking at your red dot, when you're aimed in at a target and you're looking at the red dot, what's the red dot doing? 
Yeah, dancing, dancing jumping around. all over the place too, right? He goes, "Your iron sights are doing exactly the same thing. They're just spread across the side radius of the gun, so it doesn't feel as dramatic. And they're chunky pieces of metal, so you don't see it as much. All you see is a light. Yeah. But what it relates to on the target is jumping all over the place. He's like, by running a red dot, forcing yourself to dial that down and smooth that out and get more steady." Well, you're doing the same thing to your iron sights. And uh, I was telling this, I was telling some of the cops that were here this week, and I was like, you guys got to go to Red Dots. When I first really got into Red Dot shooting, I shot one of the standards I shoot all the time, which is a 500-point aggregate bullseye drill. Max score is, is 500 points. And it's from 20 yards, 15 yards, 10 yards, 7 yards. Um, I would consistently shoot 480, 483. In the low 480s. Mm -hmm. Consistently shoot in the low 480s. I started running a red dot. And I shot like a 460. You know? But then I figured it out. And I started shooting 489. 490. 491. Till consistently with the red dot. I was shooting almost possibles. Pulling one round. Shooting a 499. Shooting a 498 out of a 500 point, point target. Call. Standard. So I'm shooting consistently 498s, 499s. I said, let me see what happens when I go back to my iron sighted Glock 17. Same guns. 17 with a red dot, 17 with irons. I go back to my iron sight 17 that I used to shoot low 480s on consistently. And I had it all tracked. And right away, first quad of the gate, 491. There you go. So I, kept, I continued to shoot a few times with the iron sights. And now it's in the low 490s. With iron sights, so I brought my score almost up a whole 10 points, went back to red dot, and now I'm shooting almost possibles again, you know? It's so fucking rad, the proof's dude. in the pudding. Well, and like you said, like, there's there's always going to be a period of time when new technology comes in, when people are hesitant to say, this is the way. For sure. You know? Well, but like again, you told me, you said, like, can you imagine going back to irons on your rifle? And that's almost laughable. It is, it is laughable. <laughs> Go right now to the unit and say, hey, guys. Go back sorry, to irons. You guys got to strip all your optics, all your all your variable power scopes, all, all your red dots off your guns, and, and put your charging carry handles back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what the fucking world do we live in? Like your M16 right. A2s or yeah, whatever you the know, fuck. Like, like, you know, super glue your, your Ford broom handle back on there and, and, and duct tape a mag light to it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Bro, I, I, I've told you my forward my fucking broom handle story right I ever told you this i don't know dude we're yeah. on a rooftop in ramadi yep and we're taking fire yep and i always tell people bro if you're if you're taking fire and you want to kill the guy guess what you got to do you got to stick your head up you got to stick, you got to expose yourself <laughs> yeah. if you want to get some you got to you got to be willing to give some that's fucking gunfighting there's no way around it and so the sandbags were thick though they were like three feet thick right and so Obviously, you want the lowest profile above that sandbag as you can get. And I put my rifle up, and I, I put my rifle on the sandbag, and now that fucking broomstick is holding my rifle three and a half inches higher. So what? Else, where's my head have to go? Even higher than that. To get to that fucking, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get to my sights. For sure. And so, bro, I put my head up, and I was like, oh, fucker, dude. And I ducked back down. I unscrewed that broomstick and threw it off the, ro the rooftop and put my rifle back up, and now I had this, like, comfortably low profile yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like that was kind of crazy a real world engagement taught me something about my gear you know I mean, you've seen my rifles i don't run a forward pistol grip on my rifles um i either run just the just the, the little the, mag pull the rail thing? system oh. or a little finger oh the, yeah, stop, yeah, the little, little finger, finger stop. stop that's all i run so i can still so you that's don't exactly shoot it. your finger off i want to run my i want to be able to put my rifle right on top of something yeah. Or roll at 90 degrees right on top of something without anything getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So. Fuck yeah, man. Awesome, man. All right. Well, do we got anything else that's pertinent? I know JOAO has to go to the, yeah, we gotta get the, airport, the airport here shortly. But yeah, party's over, unfortunately. We got a lot. Of, we got a lot in, dude. It was fucking cool. Yeah. Um, and then maybe we'll come back and get intoxicated and do a current events episode i need to i want to talk about i want to talk about new jersey cops being able to smoke marijuana off duty oh really we'll yeah. talk about it real quick yeah. and then we'll wrap this up i mean i probably should have studied more about it but apparently the new, Jer new jersey legislation basically said that if your law enforcement cannot get in trouble anymore for smoking marijuana off duty 
Well, it's about fucking time, dude. Bro, it's fucking absurd that this shit is still illegal. Bro, it really is fucking absurd. First responders, police, soldiers, Marines, because fucking I lived that life for 20 years. How many? I wonder what the percentage is of men and women in those professions that are alcoholics. Because I can tell you, it's fucking high. I know plenty of cops will go home after shift. And they'll drink a fucking 12-pack. That's what I'm saying, bro. All right. Now we want to know why our fucking cops are overweight, fat pieces of shit. Yeah. All right. They're stressed out. Yeah. They're stressed out, dude. They so need they, something, they want bro. something to relieve that when they get home. And, and depressed, too, because, bro. 100. Dude, this know, is a depressant. You up, but take this it is down, This is a depressant. This exactly. is a depressant. And, exactly. you know, my whole thing is, like, I'm not even talking about from the standpoint of getting higher, getting drunk. Place. I'm not even talking about from the talking standpoint about the of getting high. Point. I'm talking about like the medical point of it of there was a time in my life where I was drinking three to five whiskeys to dull the pain to help me go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Now tell me how fucking healthy that is. Yeah, dude. But I can't eat a fucking half of an edible or take two fucking puffs of THC to help me fucking go out of my pain and fall asleep. Well, and this is for me, this is why I switched from alcohol as we're sitting here having some beers, but like... I'll have one beer or something here or there, right? We have one beer. I don't drink anymore because you go out and you have a night of drinking. Dude, it ruins my whole weekend now. Like, I wake up the next day. 100%. Oh, fuck. When when, when I was in uh, Washington the last time with drunk uh, uh, Ivan's... uh, Academy. That's what I'm saying, oh, I, bro. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I may have gotten a video of you, yeah, bro. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> hanging out the like, window of the car. Basically, yeah. <laughs> no, like no. So we we me and Joel went down and kicked it with Ivan Salivary and his team, Victor and Rob and those guys, and it was just drink after drink. And I, when I say I don't drink anymore, I'm not against it. I just don't choose to do that socially anymore. Really, well, not a regular basis. No, and- but if I'm at someone's party and they bring me a shot, okay, I'll have a shot with you, and then another shot, and then it turned into ten shots. Or See, I don't or do 15. that. I don't do that Bro, anymore. And I, well, we shouldn't have done it. But- I respectfully say no. Joe, I was like, literally. Uh, I, I try, I try, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> respectfully, they were, they were like, you gotta do it. I'm like, all right, I'm here, right? Yeah, the world <laughs> champ is here. Let's party. <laughs> 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 and fucking, uh, but my whole point of saying that is like, dude, you wake up and not only is one day ruined, sometimes two days are ruined. Bro, everything, man. But fucking when you, weak, bro. Bro, bro, when you it, fucking it smoke before brain. you go to bed, I sleep better. And I wake up and I feel better, not worse. Bro, all right. So this is my coming out story to the world. <laughs> coming out of the closet? Coming out of the, I'm coming out of the You're closet. You're going to make all my gay followers super happy right now. Go follow me, Do Greg Lappin, on Do Instagram. It. Lots of shirtless pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so, shit, fucking three years ago, maybe? Two and a half, three years ago? I was pretty in a pretty bad way. Right before I opened the academy, maybe, like right about... And, dude, I was drinking a ton. I was in a lot of pain. You know, like, I, I broke my lower back, like, 20 years ago, my L4, L5. And I had real bad sciatic pain. I was in a fucking lot of pain. I was not sleeping at all. I was having, like, night terrors and, like, insomnia issues. Bro, it was making me sick. Like, I was not sleeping. I was, I was not feeling good. It was making me sick. And uh, I got a buddy, a pretty good buddy. He's a smart dude. And um, he was like, bro, you got to try THC. I was like, dude, I can't. I'm like, oh, I still work as a cop. I still carry a badge and a gun sometimes. He's like, bro, when was the last time you ever got randomly drug tested? I was like, oh, never. Last time I shot somebody was the last time I had to, you know, do a drug test, <laughs> right? And he's like, plus, you're not using it all the time. Like, it doesn't stay in your body that long. You're not using it to get high. You're taking a little bit before you go to bed to help you sleep. Just try. You try, you try, right? <laughs> so I tried. And try sure it, you like it. Sure enough, dude. I slept like a baby. Yeah. I slept like a baby. Um, didn't wake up groggy. Didn't wake up with a hangover. A lot of my inflammation, my pain went away. I was able to sleep and just kind of melt off in sleep. Didn't have any dreams with it. Whenever I took the THC, I didn't have any dreams with it. Uh, so no night terrors, no waking up. And, bro, not even, like, taking, like, Advil PM or something. You wake up groggy as fuck, bro. Dude, Advil's poison. You know? Gra- groggy as fuck. So, bro, I was taking a shit ton of Advil at the time, too. I was taking 800 milligrams of Motrin with whiskey at night. God, Jesus. Bro, horrible for your body, dude. Horrible. So, I was like, let me give this a shot, right? So, I started giving a shot, dude. Three years now. I don't drink anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't have whiskeys at night anymore. 
I rarely take ibuprofen anymore at nighttime. My bedtime ritual, red light goes on. I take a couple of hits from my, my pen or a gummy, you know, like an edible. I don't smoke flour. I don't have flour around just because of the kids and the smell, and I don't really want it to be known. Now that I'm seeing it on a podcast to the I'm world. I'm going to send you a whole fucking suitcase full of joints now. <laughs> Me and John are going to bring you to the flower dark side. <laughs> Bro, the last time I walked in the academy, last trip you guys were here, I opened the fucking front door. I'm like, oh, it smells like Cheech Chong in here, bro. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, and literally that's the only reason I use it. Yeah. I don't, I use it therapeutically to, to and, go and to I, bed. And I'm going to tell you what, bro, you're probably looking better than ever. Yeah. If you haven't done that change, that 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 transition probably would be fat by now, bro, right? <laughs> no, for, no sure. for sure, for sure, fatter you, than me. You, you <laughs> wouldn't be, you wouldn't be handsome, Greg. But, hey. <laughs> but bro, seriously, the amount of calories I was taking in at night, what it was doing to my body, what it totally, was doing to my totally. liver. Um, so now I literally I take a, a a gummy or just a couple little hits, like two or three little hits from my vape pen. I lay in bed. Mom and I talk about the day, and bro. I sleep comfortably. I don't have night terrors. I don't wake up at 2 a.m. and stew the rest yeah. of the night and walk around. And I get up in the morning. I make my breakfast. I'm refreshed. I'm not hung over at all. I'm not slow. I'm not groggy. I'm not out of it. And I'm good to go. And honestly, like, I've done, I've done tests. Um, my body fat percentage, the amount that I drink water, the amount of water that I hydrate with, the amount that I sweat, by 3 o'clock the next day, it's out of your system. I'm pissing clean. And, bro, I mean, I've talked about it on the show before. Our brains have cannabinoid receptors. Yes. And that means that the only molecule in the world, in nature, that can bind to them is from the cannabis plant. So you can, I don't know if it's you, fucking evolution. made for it. I don't know if it's by design, but that plant has a symbiotic relationship with human beings. But bro. What, That's real. For sure. And what pisses me off though, man, what pisses me off is here I am, I'm doing the right thing nature wise by me and my body yeah and i'm not doing anything that's jeopardizing anybody else's safety or health including myself yeah yet because of what i do for a living and because of what i want to do to give back to the community to help people i'm breaking the law hey, and i could i could that. fucking i could get in uh, trouble or go i could get in legal trouble bro. or lose my job for it and also bro, Fuck that, i never dude. saw a father of family smoke a giant go home and beat up their kids yeah, their wives Bro. right and when and i have seen a lot of fathers of family like doing that after drinking yeah, all that dude. so bro it's same. but it fucking pisses me off that I, i've like honestly i mean you guys know the deal you, we've known the deal since we met right well the well, second time we met i guess no. <laughs> well can we tell that story on yeah, yeah? yeah huh. <laughs> like we meet you you were there bro we're both still cops we're both cops because i was doing the same thing i was dealing with <clears throat> massive insomnia issues yeah. and i'm not here to fuck it <clears throat> i don't know if it's from fucking ptsd or depression or relationship problems financial problems but All i was the above dude. i was having no fucking good night's sleep when i was still a police officer or just the stress of that fucking job and same, I did the exact same thing. And I started smoking. I probably smoked the last year that I was a police officer to go to sleep at night. Yeah. And so, like, we're at this event. We're both cops. <laughs> we meet, and we're like, hey, what's up? Instant connection. Like, it was cool. And we had mutual friends, so that, like, already validated it, you know? Like, Seth's like, dude, Lappin's fucking good, dude. Lappin can fucking outshoot me now. Like, <laughs> Now, ever, always. I could always. <laughs> Seth, I could always outshoot you, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> So then me and Joao were like, dude, let's fucking go have a joint. And I was like, oh, bro, I'm a fucking cop, dude. So and remember? Have a joint, talk about other planets and yeah. maidens and shit. <laughs> so, dude, you know, me and, like Joao, and, me and Joao that, that, go that hide. Stuff. We go hide downstairs with Lou. Remember Lou? Oh, my oh, yeah, God. God. The three, Lou, of, us, the three of us smoked a joint together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> and then I found out a year later that Greg did the same thing. He's like, man, me and Jordan went and hid in the, around the in barn, the barn. had a joint. Well, I was sleeping in the barn. <laughs> That's where I was staying. Like, I was, yeah, I was sleeping in the barn. So yeah. we went down there. It was nighttime now by that time. Yeah, yeah. And we went down the barn, and I'm on, like, a big fucking air mattress with fucking Max. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking like coming and visiting me at night. I'm like, don't eat my face, bro. Fucking the <laughs> dog, you know, demon dog. And uh, yeah, me and me, fucking Jordan and, and one other guy down there, uh, who I won't mention his name, went down there. Everybody and fucking blazed up from a each other bit. doing yeah, the yeah. same thing. Yeah, yeah bro. <laughs> blazed up a little bit. And then the the trip you came out here. So fast forward several months after that, you came out here. Both you guys were yep, out here. Yep. And I forget how. And we, I was how, still a cop. You were still a yeah. cop. We were, this was we had pre-video. You were still a cop too. 
<laughs> the pre the video. And we were in my Land Rover. Yep. And uh I, I don't I made I made some sort of comment like, man, fucking cops, you know, getting a dime bag or something or whatever. Whatever it was, and you're like, What well, do you think weed's bad? I'm like, fuck no, I don't think it's bad. I think it should be fucking legal. Yeah. And you're like, all right, man, we're <laughs> homies now. No, I, remember, I, I, remember, I remember the conversation. Greg goes like, all right, I thought I couldn't be your friend from now on, but <laughs> if you like weed, we're your friends. But, but you know, I, like, also, I also used to microdose mushrooms yeah. while on patrol. Because, yeah. I mean, we'd have to, when, when I was working day shift, it's 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's a 12-hour fucking shift, yeah. which means you're up at 3 in the fucking morning to get down there and get in your gear, all the bullshit. Yeah. And it's like, dude, it just fucking wears you out. And I would take a capsule of fucking mushrooms, and the whole day just would go into HD. Yeah, I could see clear. I felt like I was a little sharper. And it was just like... Man, why why do people think this is bad? I don't know, man. I'm a better I'm a better fucking cop when I'm microdosing. And like people will hear this and be like, dude, Anderson's fucking crazy. But dude, it is now like, dude, the VA is doing psilocybin tests, plant medicine through ayahuasca and ibogaine and shit. People are finding, oh, it is good for oh, you. Oh yeah. I've you got know? a buddy I've got a buddy who's still in, uh, not law enforcement, but works for the government and he's had fuck fifty something surgeries. The guy's pretty fucked up. And uh, they're just filling him with opiates, like pills after pills after pills. Here, take these pills and these pills and these, because he's in a ton of pain. Bro, it's big pharma, like, man. He's like, fuck that. So he is he's microdosing with yeah. mushrooms, and he's like, bro, it helps me more than any of those pills that are going to get me fucking addicted and probably out on the street using yeah. heroin when they cut it all away from me. Bro, there's but a, it's illegal. There's a but documentary, I mean, you know, like, and, and dude, it makes you want to go down those conspiratorial rabbit holes yeah, because yeah. it's like. Why is the stuff that works illegal and the stuff that that hooks, you. that hooks you being prescribed by every fucking doctor, right? And dude, there's a there's a documentary called Dosed, and it talks about using ibogaine to break heroin addiction, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like fucking magic. And they were they were working with this girl that had a heroin addiction of like twenty fucking years, her whole life. A week of ibogaine, done. Yeah, and it's like okay. How much longer are we going to pretend? But it, it's actually cool, though, because, like, I usually hate every single last aspect of the fucking government. want to kill them all and overthrow them. But a lot of places are starting to legalize mushrooms. And I and, and fucking, why not? Dude? dude, it blew my mind when I heard about New Jersey. Dude, it makes perfect sense. Like, guys on Night Watch, you go home. You know how hard it is to get good fucking sleep? Dude, During the day when you're on night watch? I wouldn't work night shift oh. for a $2 million a oh, year salary. Horrible. Well, fucks your life up, dude. Completely yep. fucks your life up. But now, these guys can go home, right? Put their blackout shades in their room. Smoke a, you know, take a couple hits or eat an edible or whatever. Mm -hmm. And just fucking drift off to sleep for a little bit and get good, good REM sleep. Dude, when I started, when I started smoking to sleep versus drinking, I was wearing a whoop strap. And I'd wear it through the night and track all my so you sleep. you got fucking data. I got data, dude. You want to talk about REM? I would enter REM way earlier and stay in REM way longer. And I wouldn't have those spikes when I'd have night terrors. Dude, it was, yeah. it was life changing. I'll, I'll be honest, dude. It was life changing for yeah. me because I was going down a downward spiral. I told some of the guys on the mat after we had wrapped up yesterday, like my story of when I had come home and was like back living here before I'd opened the academy. And that I was in a downward spiral that was either going to land, end up with me divorced, in prison, or dead. Mm -hmm. And that's right about the time when I was introduced to THC and started smoking at night and stopped drinking, started seeing a shrink, started talking to my shrink, started meditating. And, bro, I attribute that a lot to, like, fucking where I am now. Bro, you it's know, not really a – it's, it's not by chance because you and I walked a very similar path – on the verge of divorce, being pissed off at our wives, being fucking mad, not being able to rest. We're both the happiest we've ever been. Yes. Meanwhile, eh, JOA has always been happy yeah. since I've known him. <laughs> yeah. That's so, why I'm not speaking too much. I'm just because That's because you learned the ways earlier. You know, I felt like 
in line with the indoctrination and maybe it's because i had to but like the whole time i was in the military i was like weed is for fucking losers bro me too dude i was a fucking narc for a long that's what I'm time saying. bro <laughs> and know? it's like, like that's because they push that and like oh if you want to be in special operate if you piss hot fucking you're hothead you're out of here <laughs> it makes you lazy yeah. like bro some of the best athletes i know are fucking stoners bro <laughs> you know what makes you lazy is not having discipline. Being lazy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. it's not fucking using cannabis, no. dude. I know tons of people that are fucking savages. Yeah. And so, no, like, of course, you you also have the wrong way to use. Of course, right? like anything, man. Yeah. Right. For there's sure. That's the wrong that's way. That's exactly the point. There's, there's the a, wrong there's way the, to use coffee. You know? like, like Lapin says, like that. There, there is the a way. There is the way, right? So, yeah. So there is many ways. There is the right ways to do. There is the wrong ways to do. Of course, the wrong way to do gonna put you in a a harder situation, a harder spot that you're going to become lazy. But you were talking about this this morning, right? When you were going to the range to, to, to clean up and get all the, the targets. Bro, if you do it right, it's just benefits. Yeah. You know? And it's not just benefits for you. It's benefits for your family, for your wife, right? So the right way, done right, it's, it's the way to go. And I remember you told me, you're like, man, I took a break. Life wasn't as good, so I'm back. Dude, bro, you well, know, I took a break and wasn't making good for me. Also, because it's ridiculous, but I was trying to change the marijuana for alcohol. I was oh, trying yeah, to yeah. become a normal person. No, it's worse. Bro. Oh, of course, that's a, that's bro. Worse I, I, I was I was doing the wrong transition. I was doing like, ah, oh, maybe if I drink at night, get a six pack or maybe a bottle of wine. And bro, at the end of the day. People are like, hey, man, let's smoke. And I'm like, I'm not smoking. It's like, oh, really? You stop? I'm like, yeah, but I don't think it's making good for me. You know, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm drinking, you know? And when, when I had that, the, the, when I had the, the realization, I was like, fuck, dude, stop. Just stop drinking. You're not a drinker, never being. Come back. Right? Come back. Come to, back to us. The yeah. plant was asking and, you. And, Bro, everything improve, everything yeah. fix it, you know. And this is how much sense it makes. And th I'm not the, I'm not uncommon. This is kind of a norm. So this is before I was with my current agency. This was the last agency I was with. But very regularly, my page would go off at 1 a.m. midnight. Uh huh. And I'd have to jump up out of bed, and I'm in a passed out slumber, not sleeping good, but because yeah. I'm fucking hammered, because I just put down five whiskeys Ugh. like this many fingers and now i'm getting up putting my fucking camis on splashing water cold water on my face drinking a five hour energy dehydrated dehydrated cotton mouth and going to a swat roll yep like that has not happened once in the last like almost three years now since yeah. i started taking a little bit of of thc before bed because i'm not getting high if i wake up you're if good. I get woke yeah, up, you're good. I'm good. I'm focused. I'm switched on. It just settles me and relaxes me. So I have not gone to one SWAT roll fucking drunk. Feeling like shit. People are gonna listen to this and be like, that irresponsible, reckless motherfucker. Oh, fuck but those, hey, fuck those people. I'm not I'm not abnormal. That's there that is not abnormal for, for like no, people bro, that are on the what call I said when this do. conversation started. <laughs> First responders and military, uh, a fucking massive percentage of them yeah. are alcoholics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so yeah. and dude, I think the military needs to catch up too. You know? Fuck big time, bro. Because the military is big time. fucked. Yes. I always like people always think like, oh dude, it's such a patriotic thing to do for your country and they probably think like the military lifestyle is like fucking rainbows and everybody living in those a bunch of you know like psychopath uh, fucking dysfunctional was it we were soldiers where they're all living in those nice neighborhoods yeah, and all the wives are yeah. pretty as like no the military is dysfunctional as fuck like, dude almost welfare fucking each other's wives and fucking around on one bro another. like and i'm talking about dudes at the highest level of special operations like my buddy like dude i went home today and my fucking wife like smashed the nintendo over my fucking head and then threw it into the brick fireplace so then i fucking threw her as like what yeah bro yeah, yeah, <laughs> chill bro yeah, yeah, like yeah. stop telling those stories yeah but but that's fucking the reality of it yeah. the military is dysfunctional as fuck yeah yeah and a big portion of that is alcoholism yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right, we're already here, dude. It's time to fucking go. You oh, got your. Oh hours. damn, we gotta get yeah. Jayo to the airport. Yeah, man, to the, the airport, home, bro. <laughs> go home. I got a business to run, man. Smoke a joint, see your woman, and call it a good day. Yeah, bro. Come on. Uh, I love you guys, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Peace.